Hello and welcome to First Canada's FTC SIM Tutorials. This series is about how to use FTC SIM, a first tech challenge robot simulator created by First Canada. And if you've never done it before, uh, this is what this introduction video is going to be all about. Um, there have been some changes since we started in March of 2020 to uh, put this out there. And um, the big change is that this is now available at its own site, ftcsim.org. So when you type in ftcsim.org, you're going to get to this landing screen. And when you do that, you're going to need to create a login. So if I go over here and I choose login, uh, it's showing my login, but uh, I'll tell you that it's free. So you can sign up as an individual. If you're a teacher, you can sign up and there's things in uh, later videos that explain how you can create a class and assign things to the students and then see their progress as they go through. But when I go here to log in, and, and by the way, if you do this as a teacher, you can assign logins and passwords to the students so that they don't need to put in an email address. But if you're going to line up, sign up as an individual or sign up as a teacher outside of the school setting for the individuals, you will need to put in an uh, email address and a password to create your login. And when you do that, it's going to ask you for some information so you can take a look at that when you do that. So I'm going to log in. It's going to take me back to this page. Um, basically, there are five areas that you can go to. The, this one is whether you log in or not, there's, it's available. So you don't have to create an account to try it out if you want. But as I said, it's free, so there's no harm. Uh, the one we're going to look at today is an FTC movement, but there are uh, puzzles dealing with sensors, just puzzles to challenge you. And then we have a new one here with a different robot called Grabby. And then finally, we have the arena, which allows you to compete against uh, other people, uh, other students, other adults on making a robot do some challenges. So we're going to start with this FTC movement because we're assuming that nobody's ever done this before. Uh, and that's why you're watching this video. So you can see uh, this FTC movement has 10 different puzzles or challenges. We're going to start with the first one. All the puzzles and challenges uh, pretty much start with a video, which is pretty much me explaining something about um, a topic or a skill that you would need. And here in FTC, um, ooh, my stuff has moved over to the side. Okay, there we go. So here in the ftcsim.org, we see that there are a couple of screens I want to quickly talk about. So the first screen over here on the far left is where you go to actually get your blocks. And eventually you're going to take those blocks and you're going to put them into this framework, which is the middle screen. So this basic template framework is the same for every one of the challenges and it doesn't do anything. So if you try to run it, you're going to see that it doesn't do anything. You have to put more code in and the code you're getting here from the left, as I explained. And here's your robot. It's an at first tech challenge robot and it's on a first tech challenge size field, which are these uh, soft puzzle piece tiles. It's normally a 12 by 12 foot area and we, uh, cordoned it off a little bit so that uh, we could do a couple of things in each of the challenges. The goal of all of the challenges is to get your robot to drive forward and stop close to the flag. And when you do that, a dialogue box will come up telling that you did that and then you can go on to the next challenge if you wish. Although if you watch some of the other videos, you'll notice I keep coming back this one to this one to demonstrate some of the skills. So as we keep going, um, basically what's going to happen is we want to drag in some of these uh, blocks. As you're going to see, it's blocks coding. And down here it says run blocks because we just added in another one that's just Java called onbot Java. But I'm not going to go to that one today. And you can see there's where the tab is if you want to go in and try that one as well. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here on the plus down here so I can make sure you, that you can see this a little clearer and we're going to put some of this code in. So there are two motors attached to these back wheels. The robot is facing forward and each of these two motors are going to want to need to be turned on in order for the robot to go forward. So we get that from going to actuators, which I've 
clicked on. So it's like this, I clicked the drop down, then DC motor. And I'm going to actually go into here where it says dual, because there's only one. And I want to turn both of the motors on. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to drag it in here where it says put run blocks. And as we do when we code, I'm going to try that out. So I click on run blocks and I see it's just spinning. Well, it's spinning because one of the motors here is going to turn this wheel so it goes forward towards this one. But this motor over here, the one on the left, is going to turn the motor in reverse, although it's thinking it's turning it forward. But because the motor is actually flipped from the original one here to this one here, it's actually turning it backwards. So we need to put in a little piece of code up here under the initialization box to tell the motor left to act as if it is in the same direction as motor right. So we're going to go back up to DC motor. And we're going to check, choose and drag in this direction one. So it's the third one from the top. So I'm going to put it up here and I'm going to tell it instead of going forward, I want that motor to go reverse because if it stays at forward, it's actually going to go reverse. So this solves that problem. And now when I click on run, it goes forward, but unfortunately it doesn't stop. And if you zoom in, uh, I'm not going to zoom in because of the time constraints I'm under, but you'll see that these wheels are still spinning. It's not stopped. And in a real, with a real robot, with real motors, it could burn them out. So I'm going to reset that. So I need to do something else and I need to, to get it to stop. So the, the value that I put in here for one, which is the default, is the maximum speed of that motor. Um, but if I don't give it any speed, so if I go to DC motor, dual, and I choose this one again, and I change them to zeros, that doesn't give it any power, and that's going to stop my robot. And what happens here is that it doesn't seem to do anything, but really the case is that it does, going from the top of the code down, doing one piece of code at a time, it's going to do this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, and then very quickly do this one. So it's going to start the motors, and then it's going to stop them right away. So what we want to do is we want to add something in here that's going to cause the motors to, it's going to delay going to this next line to turn the motors off. So it's up here under linear op mode, the very first of the ones, and there's only four of them in here. And we're going to choose this sleep block. And the sleep block is going to tell us that when you turn the motors on, then go to this next block as it would, because it's the next one in the line. And stay on this block for a thousand milliseconds before you go to the next one. So it's going to then allow this motor to go at full speed at one and one on t for one, one second. It's a thousand milliseconds. So let's see how far that gets us. Well, it gets us close, but it doesn't quite get it there. Through trial and error, that I know that the real number here should be 1,500, so a second and a half. So again, does the code going from the top to the bottom. And it's going to stay on this piece of code. It's not going to go to the next piece of code to turn the motors off. It's going to stay here for a second and a half. And let's see how that works. And it works. In fact, um, I'm going to say not yet. Uh, in fact, I could have other numbers in here and it would work as well, but I need to have at least 1500 as you can. So try it out and see. Don't forget, you want to save it before you leave and go to another one. But again, it's uh, quite simple. We have a framework and into the framework, we're going to put some blocks. We put this one and then we turn the motors on and then we pause the, the program from continuing to the next line, the next block. And then finally, after a second and a half, we go to the next block and we turn the motors off. Um, there's more to it than that, but I've certainly talked for enough time and you're going to see some more in the other videos. I hope you enjoy FTC Sim. I hope eventually wherever you are in the world, you'll become part of a First Tech Challenge robotics team and that you'll enjoy doing this to a real robot. So thanks for watching and enjoy the other videos.